What's up everybody? Hopefully you guys are doing well and today's video is going to be a little different from the norm that we're usually used to seeing here on this channel as I want to talk about something a little bit more humorous and have a little bit more fun and talk about the most controversial driver in the 2023 season and that is Ross Chastain. Now Ross Chastain, we are all aware of who he is. He is the driver of the number one machine for track house racing and he has pissed off more people than Brian France did when he was seen. CEO. Now that's a lot of people. And it finally hit the boiling point at Kansas Speedway when Noah Gregson, a rookie in the Cup Series for the 2023 season, decided enough was enough and he was going to go grab him and start yelling at him and let him know what the hell's wrong with him. And well, that worked out as well as you would expect because Ross Chastain decided to throw a right hook into Noah Gregson's face. And in the end, it ended with Ross Chastain with a shit-eating grin, Noah Gregson pretty pissed off and probably ended up with a bruise on his face, and with the whole NASCAR world wondering what would have happened if we did not have security right there to immediately stop the fight, and who would have won? So then I thought to myself, how would Ross Chastain go up against multiple drivers in the Cup Series in one-on-one -on -one fights if no security was involved, and they just go at it for about 15 to 30 seconds? Well, that is what this tier list is and we have 50 drivers and individuals in the NASCAR racing world on this list. Most of them from the Cup Series, some in the Xfinity Series, some in the Truck Series and then we have some extra ones that I feel like would probably put on a good fight for the Watermelon Man himself. So as you can see on the tier list, we have seven different levels, all of them concerning Ross Chastain and how he would do in the fight. The first one, committing murder. He knocks the guy out, it's lights out for the other driver. He looks like a superhero while the other one looks like a dud. Winning the fight. Yeah, the other guy is still walking, but he clearly lost the fight and Ross Chastain was the winner. Slight win, eh, it was kind of even, but maybe Ross Chastain was able to throw the first punch or the last punch. That's how you would get a slight win. Even fight, I mean, there's no clear winner. We don't know who that's going to be. Slight loss, other way around, the other person looks slightly better. Losing the fight, he's still walking, but he clearly lost it against his fellow competitor. And getting murdered, his ass gets knocked out. So we got 50 drivers here. Let's dive into it. This is going to be a long one, but a fun one. It's time to see how each driver would rank if they went one-on-one -on -one with Ross Chastain. Now, the first person we have here is AJ Allmendinger, a driver who just came back into the Cup Series after a few years down in the x Fandy Series. Now, I've met AJ Allmendinger in person. This is a very small man. So more than likely, it's going to be a little Mac fight if he goes between him and Ross Chastain. But I've also seen his physique. And it is not that bad. He does look a little bit intimidating when he's pissed off. And he's pissed off a lot of races when his car's not handling the way he wants to. Kind of a little bit of self-anger, but still anger nonetheless. He's looked more like a dad than he is a younger man, as Justin Haley always calls him dad, which I feel like is the weirdest thing in the world. But in my eyes, I really don't see AJ Allmendinger winning a fight against Ross Chastain. He has gotten older, and he's going to be mostly punching upwards rather than straight forward, and that's going to be really tough for him. So I feel like Ross Chastain is not only going to get the slight win, He's winning the fight. I think AJ Allmendinger is not going to get knocked out, but I don't think he's really going to be a good competitor against Ross Chastain. Next up, we have Alex Bowman, and in his condition right now, he is going to get murdered. He is dealing with basically a broken back. So all he has to do is do a kidney shot, and that's it. Alex Bowman is KO'd. He is done. The hack is no more. So just by that, he's getting murdered in this fight. However, if he was healthier, I'd say it would be more of an even fight. Maybe Ross Chastain would have the slight win because I don't think Alex Bowman is much of a fighter. But I think he can still hold his ground. So if we are looking at it right here at this moment when this video is published, he is going to get murdered. But... We're going to be looking at an overall general side. Let's say he's healthy. I think it's going to be a slight win for Ross Chastain. Ah, the pasta man himself, Anthony Alfredo. Now, Anthony Alfredo is known as one of the nicest guys inside the NASCAR garage. So, I don't think he's a fighter. He's more of a hugger. So, let's say he comes up to him. It's going to be just a brief conversation. He's probably going to be something along the lines of, Hey, man, that wasn't really cool that what you did out there. I, I would suggest you race me a little bit nicer. And Ross Chastain would be like, oh, sure, of course, I do apologize. Why don't we share a watermelon after this? And that's how I feel like the conversation would go between these two drivers. However, let's say they decide to get into a fight. Well, I, I don't think Anthony Alfredo is much of a fighter. I think he's more of a hugger. So he's clearly losing that fight against Ross Chastain. I do like Anthony Alfredo a lot, but I don't see him much of a fighter here in a one-on-one. -on -one. 
Ah, Smithfield, Eric Amarola, the driver who was going to retire, but then decided to change his mind because why the hell not? Now, this could be a juicy fight. If Eric Amarola is able to eat a plate of bacon, maybe some ham beforehand, he could have that extra Smithfield strength. And maybe that's exactly what he's going to do before he confronts Ross Chastain. But Ross Chastain, he does lift up watermelons. He could probably throw them. It is a food fight uh, for the most part. And I really feel like it's going to be still a slight win because watermelons do hurt if you throw them upside the head. Bacon, you're just going to have pimples afterwards. And I really don't see that much of an advantage to Eric Amarola's side. Actually, I think once again, we're going to have Ross Chastain winning the fight. But now the 2022 Daytona 500 winner of Austin Sindrick has entered the chat. Now, Austin Sindrick seems to be another person that really doesn't get into fights. He is a really tall dude. I was very, very surprised how he towered over me because I usually see NASCAR drivers about my height. I'm a tall 5'7". Maybe some people would say 5'8". But when anyone's around the 6 foot, they just tower over me. And Austin Sidrick's one of those drivers. However, with that being said, he doesn't really seem like a guy that would really get into much of a fight. I think he's going to be at the same level as Alex Bowman. I mean, Ross Chastain is going to be looking up while throwing swings, but that's going to be about it. And I, I think maybe he'll have a slight win because just for the fact that Austin Sidrick is another one of those people who doesn't really get into fights. He mostly is just upset, and then he tries to win over the fans after he's upset. So, I think he'll hold his ground, but in the end, the fans will be happy that he was involved in the incident. Alrighty, so five people, and we got Ross Chastain in a 5-0 record. That's really, really good. He's almost getting talked about in the title picture, which is very important. But now we got Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon, basically the movie star for NASCAR. He had his own TV series. I don't even know if it made it to a season two. He was on a Netflix show with Kevin James, and that didn't really make it that far. So, his TV career is pretty busted. And right now his 2023 season is a little busted. So he has some pent-up rage. And he can probably take it out on Ross Chastain. However, with that being said, the mustache is just not going to be that intimidating. Maybe if it was a full handlebar mustache, I would feel a little more intimidated seeing him coming up on me. He does have Bass Pro Shops as a sponsor, so he could potentially get some hunting gear ready to go one-on-one -on -one with this man. But... Overall, those are really tools that he would have to grab. This is him coming out of the race car, being pissed off, and I don't really see him getting into much of a fight. Now, if maybe his grandpa is involved in the fight, Richard Childress, then maybe it's going to be more of an advantage for them. But we're talking about one-on-one -on -one fights, and Austin Dillon by himself doesn't look like a guy that's going to be winning much fights against Chastain. But hold the phone, we have our first challenger here, and that is Austin Hill. Now, we've seen Austin Hill in action. Not just in racing, but in fighting as well. As he's gotten multiple victories in the Xfinity series, he's also been very pissed off, and he will take out his anger on anyone in front of him. And last year, we saw it at Martinsville with Myatt Snyder. Now, if you see that connection, it was a hard blow. Like, Myatt Snyder, his world was rocked. He lost his ride afterwards. I mean, how do you recover from that? Uh, Jordan Anderson doesn't need that kind of publicity. And Myatt Snyder, if he didn't have his personnel there or his pit crew there to help him out, he probably would have been dead. Now... Let's look at Ross Chastain's punch. Yes, it did affect Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson was kind of shocked by it, but it didn't really look anything close to what Austin Hill delivered to Myatt Snyder. And because of that, I think we have our first loss for Mr. Ross Chastain. And I don't think it's going to be a slight loss. I think he's just straight losing that fight. I don't know if he's going to get murdered. I think maybe he will be able to throw at least one punch and he'll be able to kind of show some teeth by the end of it. But Austin Hill, we, we see what this man can do, and he can do some real damage. So if he comes up into the Cup Series full-time next year and Ross Chastain decides to piss him off, I think this will be a really good fight to watch because we're going to see Austin Hill hand Ross Chastain his ass. Now next up here, we have a Truck Series regular of Ben Rhodes. Now Ben Rhodes has been a person who has upset people in the past, no doubt about it. But I've never really seen him in a fight before. And I don't even know if he's ever delivered a punch. He's delivered a punch in his truck, as in taking people out, but not really on pit road, as far as I can remember. Uh, there could be a video right here that proves me wrong. Who knows? But Ben Rhodes is another person that I really don't feel like he's going to come up with the guns and really knock a driver out. I, I really feel like it's going to be a loss for him. He's probably going to be really upset in his interview. He's going to talk about how he, he was completely an innocent man. He should not have deserved to be punched at at all. But Ross Chastain will come back and let everybody know, hey, he's as much as a punk as me, and he needed to fight, and he clearly lost that fight. Ah, BJ McLeod. 
So as you guys are aware, BJ McLeod is the owner slash driver for Live Fast Motorsports, a team that usually hangs around in the back. They're, they're not that fast in the Cup Series. But don't underestimate Mr. BJ McLeod. This man, I've met him in person, and this man has the guns. He, they, they did him an injustice when they made his cartoon character, and they made him look like a level one boss in a video game, because this man is one of the final bosses that you'll meet on the pit road if you piss him off. I feel like this would be a man that would be able to rip you apart. He's going to be able to throw you across your Cup Series car. I think he could even win a fight against Austin Hill. He says his favorite thing to do is work out, so he just has nothing but pent-up anger. I don't think Ross Chastain is not only going to lose the fight, I think this is the first person that will commit murder. Next up, we have another driver owner, this one being Brad Keselowski. Now, Brad Keselowski, I don't think has ever won a fight in his life. He has been someone who has lost fights against Jeff Gordon. He has been almost tackled by Matt Kenseth. Pretty sure if Denny Hamlin was let loose, Denny Hamlin would have won that fight. And Denny Hamlin doesn't really feel like that much of a fighter. Nobody really liked Brad Keselowski in the early 2010s. Now people like him a little bit more. He's probably a little bit more mature in his age. But even then, that's probably made him even weaker. So I think he's going to be someone who's going to clearly lose to Ross Chastain. I, he needs to get a W. I, I'd say go against someone in the truck series, maybe like an 18-year-old. If he's able to beat them up, then maybe he would be ranked a little bit higher here in this one-on-one -on -one fight. But I see no Ws in him. And right now, I think he's just going to lose that fight and Ross Chastain, he's winning the fight. Brandon Poole, someone in an interview that said Ross Chastain should get his ass kicked, and many people would agree to that. But I don't really see Brandon Poole as another person who's much of a fighter at all. In fact, he's going to be going right up here with everybody else. Ah, Bubba Wallace, or as everyone likes to put in every single one of my videos whenever he's mentioned, Bubba Smoulette. <laughs> Clearly, this man has a lot of anger. We, we saw it at Las Vegas. He's not afraid to put you into the outside wall going 180 miles per hour after someone just suffered a concussion just a few weeks back. This man is angry. This man has a lot of strength, and we have seen him in the past really do some damage. It doesn't matter if you are a driver, if you are official. You could even be a police officer. He's going to fight you, and for that reason, I think... He could clearly win a fight against Ross Chastain, although many people are going to boo him as he's winning the fight, but this is really enemy versus enemy. Next up we have is Chandler Smith. He is a full-time driver in the Xfinity Series, part-time driver in the Cup Series. I don't really see this man really putting up much of a fight because I just don't see him as much of a fighter. I'm pretty sure if he was an angry person and we did see him in an on-track incident, then maybe we could rank him a little bit higher. But as of right now, I really don't see much winning potential here. So I'm going to put him as losing the fight against Ross Chastain. And there's really not much else for me to say just because... I don't know how he would do in a fight, to be honest with you. Ah, Chase Briscoe, one of the more nicer drivers in the Cup Garage. He doesn't really seem like anyone who would really get into a fight. At the same time, though, he is Tony Stewart's apprentice, basically. And Tony Stewart was someone who wasn't afraid to fight. So maybe that's why Tony Stewart really likes him. He also has Miranda tractors, which is kind of an intimidating machine. If you think about it, if I had someone coming at me with a tractor, I'd be scared to death. As for fighting, I don't know. I, I, I almost want to put him in the same spot as Austin Sindrick and Alex Bowman. I feel like he would be someone who would be able to hold a good fight. I think he could edge off these guys here for sure, but not much of a fighter in my eyes, but again, maybe if he's angry enough, maybe he could put on a decent fight. I mean, Denny Hamlin didn't try to throw any punches at him. He came up to him and then he thought to himself, wait a minute, this could be a mistake. So that's why I think it would be a slight advantage for Chastain, but maybe not an overall big dub for him. Ah, the 2020 champion, Chase Elliott. Um, I'm going to be very, very simple on this one. I think it's going to be an even fight. I feel like Chase Elliott is someone who can stand his ground if anyone gets pissed off at him. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, we've never really seen him throw a punch. He, he's definitely one of the more friendlier drivers outside the car. And there, there's been times where he's pissed off some drivers on the racetrack, but we've never really seen him throw a punch. With that being said, I feel like he has a good punch behind him. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about Dawsonville, Georgia, is they have a pool room, and I'm pretty sure there were fights on a daily basis watching races there. You have a Dale Earnhardt fan coming in, wins the race, Bill Elliott's not able to win, and then bam, a brawl breaks out. So he came from rough neighborhoods. He had to learn how to stand his ground. 
So that's why I think it would be an even fight. It would be really fun to watch. And don't be surprised if this is the matchup we see here in the future. For some reason, I feel like Chase Elliott and Ross Chastain at one point will go toe-to-toe -to -toe on pit road. And I think it's going to be an even fight. Chris Buescher is up next, a driver who has really improved with Brad Keselowski coming on over to RFK Racing. And this is a guy who has actually quite a bit of strength. When you see him in person, he's more of a bulkier guy. And he's still young. I really feel like this would probably be the advantage that he would need to go against Ross Chastain. So I think for this one, it's going to be a slight loss. It's only the fourth loss for Ross Chastain. And for someone like Chris Busch, I don't think many people see him as a very intimidating guy. But I called him Christopher Bell once. And I almost crapped myself, mostly because I was embarrassed by it. But he gave me a glare. He kind of smirked and said, come on. But if I would have said it again, he probably would have knocked the daylights out of me. I saw those fists kind of clench just ever so slightly. So maybe, just maybe, he would be someone who would do really, really good in a fight. Ah, Christopher Bell is up next. I'm not going to lie. Ross Chastain's committing murder on Christopher Bell. No doubt in my mind is he committing murder on him. He, he just does not look like a fighter at all. Very talented racer for sure. Very talented. But when you look at Christopher Bell, do you really see that intimidating of a guy? He, he, he still looks like a little kid. And I'm not going to lie. The, the, the man mostly has a smile on his face rather than an angry face. And when I see him with an angry face, it's more of a cute angry face. So I don't think he's winning any fights. I think Ross Chastain is clearly going to come in with a huge victory. And Christopher Bell, he, he, he is going to die in that fight. Ah, Cody Ware made it on the list. Um, he, he's not driving in the Cup Series anymore and probably for very good reasons. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a good uh, level right there. Yeah, that, we're going to just put him there and we're just going to move on. Ah, Corey LaJoy's up next. Now, this guy doesn't really seem like a guy who really gets under much people's skin. But, I don't know. Something tells me that there's a reason why people don't get upset at him. I mean, look at that beard. That is a very intimidating beard. Now, Ross Chastain also has a beard. But I feel like it would be really, really hard to make eye contact with if this guy was pissed off at you. And especially with Ross Chastain's case, it's really hard to keep eye contact. So I think Corey LaJoy may get the slight win here. I don't think it's going to be a huge win, but I think he's going to have the advantage. And people would be very impressed. I mean, they're already impressed with what he's been able to do with Spider Motorsports. But after this, uh, his popularity is going to soar through the moon. I mean, he already has the best paint scheme in the world with Old Spice. He already has the best hair in the game. And I think he's going to even get a bigger W if he was able to fight Ross Chastain because I think he would have the slight advantage. Next person we have here is Daniel Dye. Now, we've talked about Daniel Dye in the past. He has himself a bit of a history of getting into fights to the point where one of his last competitors ended with a ruptured testicle. And because of that, I'd say his cheap shots would definitely get him the advantage over Ross Chastain. Now, Ross Chastain is probably going to be blocking himself. He's heard the story, so he's probably going to be like, whoa, whoa, watch out, watch out. But all it takes is one punch to that area, and it's game over. So that's why I say he's losing the fight, because there could be a chance where Ross Chastain is able to dodge all those shots down there below the belt. But if one connects, it's over. Ross Chastain, he'll throw the white flag. He'll walk away. Daniel Hemrick is up next. Now, if this was a backflip competition, I'd say he would be able to get the victory. But he has also been in a fight with Noah Gregson, and he was able to deliver zero punches. The air got an absolute beating, and you know, his reputation as a fighter is really going to get affected by that. So I'd say it's going to be a big win for Ross Chastain, because at least he can connect punches. Daniel Hemrick might throw the most punches, but zero will land. Ross Chastain, if he connects one, he's, he, he's just the winner. He's just the winner straight up. And Daniel Hemrick already has trouble throwing punches when he hasn't even been hit in the face at all. So imagine if he really gets hit in the face, he'll probably have his back turned to him and trying to punch the air, maybe even punch one of his pit crew members. So it's going to be a clear win for Ross Chastain. Ah, now we have his teammate. Now we've actually seen Daniel Suarez in a fight before. I think it was a practice session with Michael McDowell or even a qualifying session. I don't remember. It was very, very odd to see this fight unfold because they mostly grabbed each other. Someone got thrown to the ground and then someone was pinned on the hood. It was very, very awkward to say the least, but uh, Daniel Suarez could actually be someone who could probably put on an even fight. I think Justin Marks is aware that this fight could be a pretty brutal one, so he makes sure that these guys don't really uh, throw punches at each other. He's not afraid of them arguing, but I think if punches were thrown, it'd be a pretty even fight. I think he's at the same level as Chase Elliott. He's not afraid to really get in there and really speak his mind, 
but I don't think he really has shown us anything that he could be a clear winner. So this could be actually a pretty interesting fight. Ah, now Ross Chastain's biggest enemy in the world, and that is Denny Hamlin. Now, Denny Hamlin has never really retaliated against Ross Chastain outside the race car. And even in the race car, he hasn't retaliated that much. Why is that? Maybe it's because he is scared to death that Ross Chastain is going to absolutely murder him. There, I, there's just no other way to think about this because Denny Hamlin has not really done anything against him. And maybe it's because he feels like he will die in a fight. And by all means, I think he's going to be uh, murdered in a fight when it finally does happen because he's had every single opportunity to do that and he just hasn't yet. So Ross Chastain might have a superhero strength against Denny Hamlin if they were to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's a fight that everyone wants to see, but I think it's going to be a one-sided fight just by Denny Hamlin's reactions to every single incident that has ever been involved between those two drivers. Eric Jones is next. Now, I really don't see him as much of a fighter, so I think he's going to be up here with everybody else who really doesn't look like fighters to me. I think he's losing a fight. He doesn't really seem that intimidating of a guy, but at the same time, I really don't see him really getting that upset over him. It, maybe he'll tweet about how pissed off he is, but I don't think he's ever going to be going down there and saying, hey, put up your fist. We're going down. So I think if this does happen, he's losing the fight. Haley Deegan is up next, and um, why did I put her on here <laughs> you know i think a lot of people would expect to put her up here but uh, let's think about this for a moment let's say ross chastain gets into a fight with Haley deegan he loses automatically he's getting murdered if he goes into a fight with Haley deegan just for the simple fact that he <laughs> is going to look like the worst villain in the world if he throws a punch on Haley deegan who's the most likable female driver in nascar and i don't think there's anyone even close to that but if he loses the fight, he just lost to Haley Deegan. So this is just going to be a straight loss. He's getting murdered by either the media or Haley Deegan herself. So she's at the same level as BJ McLeod. Definitely two drivers that I don't think anyone really thought would be at this level. Harrison Burton's up next, and um, he, he's joining the Toyota group up here. He, he, he is getting murdered. If they were to get into a fight, Ross Chastain is committing murder on Mr. Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton, he is just like Christopher Bell. He just has that baby face, and you really don't see him that angry. And if you see him that angry, it's almost like a four-year-old getting angry. You, do, you just stick him in timeout, and that's a good enough punishment. And I think if you were to throw a punch at him, he, he would probably cry to his dad, Jeff Burton, and, and that's not really me being mean to Harrison Burton, I just don't see him as an intimidating guy. And just by that, I think Ross Chastain will have the confidence, all the confidence in the world, to beat the crap out of Harrison Burton if this was to happen. Ah, Joey Logano, he's another person that really hasn't ever won a fight in his life, but he is notorious for pissing people off. I think it's only going to be a slight win, believe it or not. I think uh, Joey Logano has had some experience in the past. He knows what punches to avoid and knows what to really say to someone to kind of simmer it down a little bit, even though he still finds a way to piss off everybody. I still think he'll lose the fight, but I don't think it's going to be that much of a beating compared to the others because somehow, someway, this man is able to dodge punches to the point that he never gets his face wrecked, ever. He's went against Tony Stewart. Um, Tony Stewart was able to grab him, but was not able to deliver a punch. Denny Hamlin went after him, not able to deliver a punch. Kyle Busch went after him, not able to deliver a punch. So in the end, I think Ross Chastain will look like the winner, but I don't think it's going to be a huge loss for that 22 driver, just for the simple fact that this man cannot get hit at all. I, I don't know how. So uh, Ross Chastain will look like the most intimidating person against the one-on-one -on -one fight, but I think it's only going to be a slight win. Josh Berry, the substitute driver, is up next. Now, he is a master at throwing up the two-gun salute, but I don't know if he's really the master of throwing up these guns, if you know what I mean. I don't really see him throwing that much of a fight against Ross Chastain. I, I don't think he's much of a fighter. He's more of just an angrier person outside the car, and he'll yell at you, but he won't throw a punch at you. So I think Ross Chastain is winning that fight against Josh Berry. Justin Haley is up next, and it maybe if his dad, more specifically A.J. Allmendinger, was a part of that fight, then maybe it would be a little bit closer, but unfortunately this is a one-on-one, -on -one, and I say he's getting murdered. Very introverted, really doesn't talk to hardly anybody. I, I, I bet people forget that he's even in the race sometimes. So he definitely is not much of a fighter. He is the quiet kid in the group, so maybe people would be a little bit concerned by that, but if it was just Fist, 
I don't think he's winning. I, I think Ross Chastain is committing murder on this man. And Justin Haley, as quiet as he always is, is going to be knocked out. And you're going to hear the same amount of noise as you do when he's out there on the racetrack compared to if he was knocked out. Ah, Kevin Harvick is next. And Kevin Harvick, if most people do not know, Kevin Harvick is actually friends with some UFC fighters. So this man can fight. And not only that... Even though he's one of the oldest drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series, I still think he's one of the stronger guys. I think he would be able to beat the crap out of Ross Chastain. Now, he always says he's going to knock the daylights out of somebody or knock someone's teeth in, but he, he hasn't really done that in the last 10 to 12 years. Hell, you can almost go back 15 years. He, 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 he can piss people off. He can really get into their face, but it doesn't really throw a punch. But I think if the time ever came that Kevin Harvick was going to fight somebody, I think he would clearly win the fight. And against Ross Chastain, I think it's going to be a big win for the number four team after the fight is all said and done. Kyle Busch is up next, and um, this is going to be kind of an interesting one here, but I don't think he's winning a fight against Ross Chastain, but I don't think it's really going to be that much of a domination for Ross Chastain. As Kyle Busch, he's someone who's only gotten into a couple of fights, but he can't connect punches either and but I still think he can hold his ground just a little bit more than other people he's not afraid to throw himself out there he's not afraid to show people that he is angry and he was the one who introduced the hockey rules he wants the hockey rules in NASCAR so I feel like if you want hockey rules you gotta know a thing or two about fighting so I think he's gonna be actually not just a slight win I think it's actually gonna be an even fight now that I think about it I mean, if he wants hockey rules, I think him and Ross Chastain should be the first ones to put it into effect. And you know what? I think that would be a really good fight to see those two go at it. So I think it's going to be an even fight if Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain ever go at it here in the Cup Series. Next up, we have Kyle Larson. I'm not going to lie. Kyle Larson is not really that much of a fighter. We saw it against Bubba Wallace. He he lost that fight. He didn't even try to throw a punch or a pushback. He was just didn't want anything to do with it. Not much of a fighter. I think he's he's losing fights left and right. He just does not look like a guy that would really be someone who would be competitive if he was to throw some punches. I think he would mostly want to talk it out or just walk away from the incident. So if he is stuck in a one-on-one situation, cannot escape, He's losing that fight. He might be able to still stand up. I mean, he, he went up against Bubba Wallace when Bubba Wallace was at his all-time craziness angry, and he was still able to walk away. Now, granted, those were just pushes and not punches, but th- that should give him some credit that he will not get murdered, but he's still going to lose the fight. Next up, we have Martin Trex Jr., the 2017 champion. Now, I don't know about you guys. He's been an angry man lately. I don't know if you guys have been hearing his radio, but this man has been angry yelling at everybody. I don't know if the single life is really getting to him. Yeah, maybe now that he's a bachelor, he needs to go one-on-one with some people to vent out that anger. And I think if the time ever came between these two to go at it with each other, I think Martin Trex Jr. would get the slight edge. J- just because of that anger, if he was more calm and collective like he was a few years back, I'd say he'd lose the fight. But never, ever doubt someone who's angry. For some reason, when you get that anger strength, man, you're on a different level. And this man yells at everyone over the radio. And I bet you if he had someone in front of him that he did not like, that had kind of a punchable face, he would probably win that fight. So I'm going to put him at a slight loss for Ross Chastain against him. I think it would really be pretty interesting of a fight, but Martin Trex Jr. would get the advantage. Ah, the Truck Series regular Matt Crafton. He's been there forever. Now, Matt Crafton, he likes to slap butts when he's angry, but that's about it. I'd say Ross Chastain is going to have a slight win over him. I mean, maybe if he grabs his ass hard enough, maybe um, he'll fold and say, you know what, man, you win this fight. It's kind of weird that you're slapping my butt left and right. I, I don't know what else to say. So so maybe that's why I only put him at a slight win. I mean, he does make contact somewhere, so you got to give him that. But I don't think he's going to be winning a fight, especially him being one of the oldest drivers here on this list. It's going to be very, very hard for him to win against a young Ross Chastain. Next we have is Matt Benedetto, a Truck Series regular. Now, if you guys remember a few years back, he came out of driver intros in a boxing outfit. So maybe, just maybe, he had some fighting skills behind him. And we've seen him in photos. He is built. Like, built. Especially in his underwear. If I saw that man in his underwear, I'd throw in the towel. I'd be like, you know what, you win. I'm already scared as it is. I'm looking up and down, and I don't want any of that at all. So maybe, just maybe, Batty Bandetto could actually have the edge. Not really much of a fighting type, but... Man, just by what we have seen, if I saw him come out of his car and put on the boxing gear, 
I'd say he's going to have the slight advantage. So this might be a slight loss for Ross Chastain. Many people may not consider that. But just from what we've seen in the past, that is some intimidating stuff that Matthew Bandetto has been bringing out. Michael McDowell, we talked about him against Daniel Suarez, as that was kind of an even fight. So I feel like we got to put it at the same spot. Now, he is a little bit older compared to these other drivers. Mine is Kyle Busch. I think they're about the same age. So I, I think it would be an even fight. He'd, he'd probably sh uh, share the gospel in the middle of the fight. He'd probably say a verse or two, and maybe that would throw off Ross Chastain. I know it would throw me off. I'd be like, man. I didn't think about that. Bam! Throw a right hook. That 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 could be the advantage he has. But I think this more than likely would be an even fight. I can't put him ahead of Daniel Suarez when that fight was kind of a draw. So he has to be on the even side as well. Noah Gregson, we don't even have to speculate where he would go. We already know that it would be a slight win for Ross Chastain. And he is not afraid to get into fights. We've seen him in the past. But even then, he got into a fight with Harrison Burton and it looked kind of an even fight. So I think he's still going to be on the losing end. But it's great that he is someone who's not afraid so that's why he's only going to get a slight loss but it is a loss nonetheless next up we have here is our daytona 500 winner of ricky stenhouse jr now ricky stenhouse jr has to get some levels up just for the simple fact that he scored with danica patrick that's a that's a huge w as it is i mean you could go up to anybody and be like yeah i'll, I'll beat your ass all he has to say is yeah well i banged danica patrick what do you got to say about that bam you already won you already won as it is. It doesn't matter how many punch you take to the face. You still can put your arm up knowing that that fact is true. So, I mean, even fight just for that, but let, let's just look at one-on-one. -on -one. Let's exclude Danica Patrick here. He does not look like someone who would really throw the punches first. I think Ross Chastain would be able to deliver first before him. He's a little bit of a shorter guy, a little bit friendlier. So, eh, you know what? I'm going to put him right here. Because if you're willing to wreck almost every single race and take someone out, you got to be at least a little confident in your fighting style. So that's why he's a little bit ranked higher than these guys who don't have any confidence or just straight lost fights. And so I'm going to put him at a slight win. I, I don't think he's going to be a beaten Ross Chastain, but I think he's going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him for the most part. Oh, crap. I realized I put Ross Chastain in this mix. You, you, you know what? Your biggest enemy is yourself sometimes. So, I, well, we'll just put him at an even fight because I'm pretty sure the voices in his head usually tell him, hey, you should wreck this person. He's like, well, I don't know. I feel like I need to race clean. He sometimes loses that fight. But at the same time, you really can't fight yourself. You can't really punch yourself because then you'll lose the fight, but then win the fight because you delivered the punches. Let's just keep it as an even fight. We don't need to get any more confusing than already what I've done here. I I've already made this as confusing as possible, but I'm still trying my best. I got to show some brains in this. I mean, none of this is making sense at all, but you, you know what? Let's put him at even fight. I think, I think that's a good spot. Ryan Blaney, another person that I don't know has ever been in a fight in his life. I, I think he could be kind of intimidating. He is kind of a more of a cowboy look. I, I think he would be more intimidating if I saw him coming up to me than maybe a Ben Rhodes, a Brandon Poole, or an Austin Dillon. So maybe a slight win, but he's also had himself an acting career that hasn't really worked out in the Netflix series with Kevin James. He was on there too. Um, I think he flipped him off, so that gives him some points. But I don't really see him winning a fight against Ross Chastain just because I haven't really seen him fight before. But still... He still does look like someone who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone. I just don't think he's going to have the advantage. I mean, if you've thrown a punch in your past, you already have the advantage over someone who hasn't thrown a punch. Now we come up with Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest is one angry person. Um, I think Ross Chastain would lose to Ryan Priest. I don't know why. Something just tells me that if Ryan Priest was to get angry enough to go confront him, I think he would throw the first punch. He would throw the first shove. He, he would do everything first, and then he'd walk away and say, Son of a bitch deserved it. And you know what? You got to respect him for that. I think we give him the slight win. Let's just move on from that. Ryan Breeze is one angry person, especially with Cup Series drivers because he thinks they're all bums. Moving on. Ah, Todd Gillen doing some really good things in the Cup Series right now. I, I don't see him much as a fighter at all. We'll just move him on up here. This this list has already gotten long enough. I don't know if I need to explain this this much. He, he doesn't really look like a strong, beefy guy. He doesn't really look like someone who would really get that angry with people. So I'm going to put him as in winning the fight, Ross Chastain winning the fight, and him losing pretty badly because he, he's at the same level as Kyle Larson. He, he doesn't look like someone who wants to get into fights. Ty Dillon is not winning much 
watching anything right now. So um, he is getting murdered in this one. That's just been his 2023 season. I, I don't know what else to really say about him. He just doesn't really look like much of a fighter. He got into a grabbing match with Justin Allgaier, and, and that's not a good look. That's not a good look at all. So he, he's getting murdered. Ty Gibbs is up next. He is someone who likes to get into fights, especially with his helmet on. And if Ross Chastain takes off his helmet, I think Ty Gibbs will be able to do a throat punch on him and maybe get the slight victory. But it, this is with dirty tactics, so I say it's going to be an even fight if Ty Gibbs is able to get those advantages. Because if he th if he has his helmet on, which he has been notorious in fights, I think it's going to be hard for Ross Chastain to win. I, I, but at the same time, he could tackle him, throw him to the ground. He still is a little kid in most people's eyes. So I'd say this would be a pretty interesting fight. Uh, without the helmet, he's clearly losing. But I'm going to see him with the helmet. I, I don't really see him putting that off to the side. That is his protective gear. He has shown it in the past. He's like Glass Joe in like the newest punch-out game. He puts that on and is just like, I got all the confidence in the world. I could win this fight. Tyler Reddick is another person I don't really see getting into that much fights. I, I'm pretty sure he can vent his anger but I'm going to put him up here. He doesn't really have that much of an intimidating look, and he doesn't really get that many people angry to begin with, so he, he's kind of at the same level as Kyle Larson. I, I, I don't really see him as someone who's really going to get into fights. William Byron's up next. Now, I could have a biased decision on him just because I'm wearing the 24 hat, but I'm going to be a realist here. I say he's getting murdered, and you know why? It's because his career started on a computer. When your biggest fight has been your steering wheel in iRacing, you're not going to win any fights in your life. Now, maybe if it was a video game simulator of like Street Fighter or something, maybe he'd be able to get the victory. But in real life, I, I don't see him winning any fights in that way. He's just going to try to win races. That's the only thing he can win if he was ever to be aggressive towards anybody would be in the race car, not outside the race car. Next is Zane Smith. I don't really see him winning much fights. I, I don't really have too much to say about him. It doesn't look like someone who would really throw that many punches or even really piss anybody off. If I see him coming up at me, I'm, I'm going to put up my fist and say, okay, maybe I have a shot to win this. This fight so I think Ross Chastain's clearly winning this fight if he was to go up against a, a guy like Zane Smith ah watermelons um this one is an interesting one to put on this list but I still think it's one nonetheless that we should really talk about he, he has committed many murders against these things and so he is actually going to be the easiest competitor for Ross Chastain because we see it all the time he's never been close to winning a fight he actually cannibalizes him he eats him after he beats the living hell out of him throws him straight to the ground and he's part of him. He is committing murder on many watermelons, and that's why he is up here number one, easily the easiest fight for Ross Chastain. <laughs> Next up is Rick Hendrick. I don't know why I put him on here at all, but I I'm sorry, Mr. Hendrick. Uh, you're, you're not a fighter. Uh, I think you could beat the watermelon as far as a fight goes with Ross Chastain, but I, I think you're going to be losing the fight. And then lastly, we got the toughest boss of them all, Mr. Ryan Newman. Uh, no one messes with Ryan Newman. You could have every advantage in the world. He will still kill you. And now that he's made his return, people are scared once again. So Ryan Newman, he, he is going to murder Ross Chastain if they were ever to get into a fight. He just looks like BJ McLeod except one level higher. And BJ McLeod already looks intimidating enough. Now put Ryan Newman there. It's just a clear loss for the watermelon man. He's going to sell his entire farm. He's going to lose everything he ever owns if he was to get into a fight with Ryan Newman. Nobody messes with him, not even team owners. Jeff Gordon once said something to him, and Jeff Gordon almost crapped himself when Ryan Newman approached him. This is not a guy you want to fight on pit road. And that is my list. Uh, nothing intelligent came from this video whatsoever, but I, I feel like this is a really good list. And it looks like Ross Chastain would win most fights, but there are some people that I feel like would be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and some people that could easily beat him. I I'd say he's on more of the better end of getting wins, but if he's able to upset the right drivers, we might see ourselves a really good fight, but that's only if security guards were not to get involved and it was just straight one-on-ones. And that will conclude today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, a little bit different from the other ones, but definitely more sillier. Let me know if these are more videos you would like to see. They're a little bit easier to make than the other videos, so maybe I could do it in between while you guys are waiting for those longer narrative videos. So make sure to like it. Write down in the comments if you want to see more of this. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next video. So you all take care.